on the shit shit, so I guess we'll do a signal. It shouldn't even be a signal. Right, right. <laughs> Cash! Yeah. Yeah. Cash! Yeah. Welcome to a pod name. Jet Welch, God damn it, See, Yeah, This yeah, is yeah, the yeah, base yeah, fuck yeah, me yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, this Ari, is, yeah. It's, it's Pence. Yeah. You do this every time. Yeah. What's the name of the podcast? Nigga, it's a pod named Kickback. A pod named Kickback. It's like a tribe called Quest. You, you say, say the, the whole, whole thing. thing. Welcome to a pod named Kickback, also known as the Black CNN and the Revolution. Will, will be, be televised. televised. I'm no breaks new to righteous ratchet. If you throw it, I'll catch it. If you got it, I'll match it. Every Monday, <laughs> we right back at it. I am the Black Savage. What up, what up, y'all? It's JB Frank. I'm that gangster geek <laughs> coming at you every goddamn Monday. Representing NWA Nerds with Attitude. Happy Monday, everybody, on a special broadcast with a yeah. pod named Kickback. Yeah, now we, uh, Ahmad, Ahmad Rashad I, named Kickback. Well, I got, I got, I've been drinking. <laughs> I've been, been drinking. drinking. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's the night of the debate. Go ahead, dude. Go ahead. Yeah, go so ahead. we watching the debate. We wanted to make sure we got this information to you because JB's going home mm -hmm. for about a week, mm -hmm. but we mm -hmm. haven't missed an episode this year right. through the entire pandemic. And we won't miss one now. Goddamn so, right. We're not gonna tell you, but I guess we did tell you what night it was. Damn it. I wasn't gonna tell you what night it was, but it's uh you didn't hear that part. We're recording yeah. live, <laughs> we're right in front of you. This is all live, JB. Tell them we live. We live right now. Are you watching this? We live. It don't matter if it's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or June. Let's do the time war again <laughs> for my nerds out there. If you can tell me what that reference is, then you get a free mug from me, Fuck from, free from the Gangsta Geek. If you can tell me what song, what movie that song comes from, then you get a free mug from me. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, we're recording a little early. Tonight, yeah, man, because you know, you know, you know, we're top 100 in the country right now. Hey, and we gotta make sure we stick to our schedule. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Because people are watching. Hey, shout out Charlemagne, shout out Joe. You know, a lot of people are watching. You know, Spotify, iTunes, people, people paying attention. Barstool, we know you're watching, and uh, we want to make sure we don't miss a week because we ain't missed a week all year, unlike Goddamn right. every other podcast Goddamn in the right. world. Yep. So here we are. Um, we're uh, we're making this episode happen new, and because of kind of where we are in the week, we have an opportunity to talk about some things right now. You know, live and direct. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and that's coming, y'all. Well, first we're gonna do the kickback fact of the week. Yes. So humans aren't the only animals that blush. We are. We are also believed to be the only animal that feels. Well, wait, wait, wait. Humans are. Excuse me, I fucked it up. Are the only animals that bless. We are also believed to be the only animal that feels embarrassment, a complicated emotion requiring understanding, others' opinions, and other factors. Charles Darwin called blessing the most peculiar and most human of all expressions. While Mark Twain said, "Man is the only animal that blesses." Or needs to. Now you, you seem to be thinking on the other side. Well, wait, 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 wait what's yeah, that? I, I, I don't know that I. And I mean, the blushing thing, blushing in terms of the literal physiological reaction. Um, theoretically, you could argue that men are the only animals that blush on their cheekbones and on their face. However, you know, from a sexual perspective, um, men are actually one of the rare animals that physical, physiologically look at that to even look for indications of attraction. You can look at certain primate species, and if I remember what I watched correctly and what I read correctly, they blush, but they're face doesn't blush so the blushing is essential to me well but see blushing is one of those 
blushing is one of those social and then a lot of times in a lot of ways sexual things that can happen so if you're talking about blushing like sometimes i mean you have to look at all of blushing to say that other animals don't blush now if the thing said that only human beings blush blush with embarrassment then i would disagree on that point too but going in a different direction well well for me i don't look at blushing as sexual so blushing is only embarrassment and it doesn't have to be oh my god i'm so embarrassed i'm going to kill myself but it could be like that was i'm embarrassed you told everybody you love me i remember blushing isn't sexual at in nature at all to me it is only a slight level of embarrassment no matter the topic but it isn't sexual so um okay i so I blessing is sexual to you well i mean no but it's uh, it, you know it's not always sexual to me absolutely not but there are certain situations where it it is yeah yeah i can see that because i know what like the old like i won't say westerns but in like the older time uh movies with the old folks and they'd be like uh, the guy say i want to drink I would want to have one with you one day. Say, oh Lord, you're making me blush. And, and I, but that's like old timey shit. That ain't like well, my you, world. In my world, are, girls will go, oh, you're making me blush. Well, no, they no, oh, they righteous, don't. Righteous. And you also <laughs> you have to mean? factor into the it the fact that you're black. So like you're rarely yeah. you're very rarely seeing anybody blush for any reason, honestly. Yeah, well, black that's people, not true. Black people blush. Let's keep it a buck. But come on, man. Like you, like but blushing. I, I think the thing that, that blushing is, is when like a white people thing when they make the statement about it. Because I, I see people blush. People can blush over some like, um, hey, you did a really good job last night, man. You you nailed the. Photosynthesis project. Oh, thank you, man. Like, yeah, technically, that might be blushing, but I never look at blushing as a sexual thing. Um, it, it, to me, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying me to me. If I yeah. ever said some slick shit to a woman and she did start blushing, I don't go, oh, she blushing. I'd be like, yeah, I got it. You know, I don't look at it. Blushing isn't like I think that maybe you are maybe maybe you are not perceiving a sexual signal that you perceive necessarily as blushing because I think that I mean blushing has a sort of connotation with it associated with it however it also has that other connotation with it that may not necessarily be associated to you but it is in fact very very real and it, yeah, and I, I think it, i think white people look at blushing like that i'm, I'm about to do this definition because like niggas don't be like yeah, yeah I, I, I flirt with that bitch start blushing like we don't talk like that you know what I'm saying? well so, i don't know like, well nobody does is my is my point like i don't i don't understand okay. what you're saying you know, I, like, I think people do i think when i think of people using the term blessing in a sexual manner i look at it like white people uh, like you know what I'm saying? Like people people do use the term blessing in a like you did in a sexual manner. But like niggas ain't talking about it yet. I mean that bitch blush. Well, but I also said that it's all it's also because you're you're black, like you have other that's, sexual that's what black. I said. Well, and then so what I'm saying, that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. I didn't though. say it didn't exist. Okay. okay. I said white people do it. Yeah, I, I'm, well, we were talking about whether or not other animals do it and why, and I was talking about the sexual signal, and you said it wasn't a sexual signal. And it's I not, said, and then it's not to me, and then I said, oh, white people see it that way. So if white people do it, then other animals could also do it, and the fact was that well, animals don't. I, I, I'm not holding up to the fact. I'm saying that I made my decision based on black people. And then when I thought about it, I'm like, oh shit, white people do that oh, shit. Oh, okay. So, you know, I guess so. Okay. But I'm like, so the distinction I made was, oh, white people do see it that way. Niggas don't. And so I came from a nigga perspective, not a white person perspective. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was I was looking at it just purely from the whole biological thing. And the fact said that um 
that only humans uh, only humans blush. And yeah, I was like, yeah, I didn't I didn't write this though. I'm not. Yeah. Oh no 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 no. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not beholden to the facts. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. beholden to whatever I feel about it. And I'm like, mm. I was like, well, you know what? It ain't my experience, but white people might do this shit. So I, that was me, like, kind of like going, like, meet in the middle. Okay. Okay. But technically, by definition, blushing is the reddening of a person's face due to physiological reasons. It is normally involuntary and triggered by emotional stress. Associated with passion, embarrassment, shyness, anger, or romantic stimulation. So that would probably deal with strictly humans, because it would go with the face. I think your argument was that it, it, like uh, uh, animals ask could blush, not according to the definition of blushing. Well, the definition, definition of blood does it. I'm, yeah, of a person's face. Yeah, yeah, and I, and that's what I was saying. You know, like, um, but like other animals' bodies changing color or other animals giving signals because of an emotional reaction, especially reacting to embarrassment or lust, like being in heat. Like I've seen that. I've seen my dog act embarrassed. So is does her face flush? No, she's fucking covered in fur, but she acts embarrassed. And the nature of the argument is whether or not other animals manifest that emotional reaction that is defined by those emotional components. And that's the way I was looking at it. I was like, well, if we're going to restrict it to the face, humans are the only motherfuckers who give a fuck about the face really because we the only motherfuckers with our hair on our face and most of us got that anyway you know what i'm saying like other animals aren't looking dreamily into each other's eyes and shit that ain't that ain't the way it works you know yeah that, that, that's a tricky one we got to check that kickback fact mm-hmm. that was a little tricky one but um i high and low of the week jb our high and low of the motherfucking week in the early week yeah, um, the high uh, actually is another is another accomplishment at work. Um, you know, getting some of these key. That was weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, all good, all good, all good. Um, so, um, <clears throat> um, you know, it was good to get that. Sh- Making faces at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so now we got two signals. I did. <laughs> So I don't even know why you're checking it. Then it's irrelevant. It's in that order. Doesn't matter whether we are or not doing it. It was great. That's what it did. Well, it was that was the message that it gave me. It was saying it was having co- trouble connecting to the internet. So when it says that, you you know that's. First thing you check. Why is it trying to connect to the internet? Uh, that is a wonderful question. Yeah. Um, uh, high and low. Um, my personal uh, low of the week is honestly, you know, um, I'm going to miss Sky. <laughs> 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 you know, going out of town, I'm going to miss Sky and I mean, I haven't been on vacation, like I haven't been away for a week in over a year. So like, I don't know, my job is kind of my baby. You know, I'm I'm like, I'm worried that everything's going to fall apart when I'm not there. So there's a little bit of, 
there's a little bit of righteous nervousness with this trip too, and dealing with that has been my low of the week. But that's job not really or sky, both. Okay, honestly, okay, just okay. like leaving and leaving everything. You know what I'm saying? Like leaving everything. Like I, you know, I don't want shit to fall apart while I'm gone. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, my high, my high of the week thus far has been just, just getting back to the ground. Like, I mean, it has been a weird last couple of weeks and just getting back to what I'm doing. Podcast numbers looking well, cracking the top 100. That's my high. It's like things are moving the way I want them to move. Um, for the podcast, for the merch line, for the Patreon, you know what I'm saying? All that shit because of the kickbackers. I'm, I'm definitely high on that. Um, my low of the week is just... um. Having a dark cloud, mm. I feel that it's a cloud that's you know, I'm, I'm still doing my thing, I'm still living, everything is going well, but I know, like, over here somewhere, it is this darkness, it, and there's some you know entity. Joke just there went go. viral. Our viral story of the week is why all of y'all are here now. Right. The president, vice presidential Harris and Mike Pence. Uh, I got a lot to say on this. Um, JB, you want to frame it? You want me to frame yeah, it? Yeah, well, let me frame it with this first of all. Um, so those of you who saw news posts on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, been drinking. yeah, been yeah. Drinking. you might have joined us in a little a little game we played during the the, the debate where uh, <laughs> so we picked we've picked a few topics and we say okay every time those topics come up you got to take a drink and, yep. and, and about a third of the way through the debate new and i had to stop drinking we've been drinking we've been drinking <laughs> young we, we picked justice yeah social social injustice tax, yeah, social injustice we picked taxes. Taxes. And what was the first one? Um, oh, COVID-19. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like we predicted what this shit was going to be about tonight. Oh, my God. And it just kept coming up over and over and over and over again. Um, I knew, I felt like this was actually a debate, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, we got to hear... Uh, a fair bit about, you know, policy and agenda. And that is what I expected. Kamala Harris stomp all over that nigga's oh, yeah. ass oh, yeah. with every question. <laughs> yeah, mama love, put, put, put foot the ass in that joke. I, I, I enjoyed it. I thought that um she did what Biden couldn't do against Trump because Trump is just so boisterous. And even though Mike Pence did his best Trump impersonation talking over everybody, he still had to be reserved because she's a woman, in my opinion. That was his strategy. I absolutely agree. So she was able to get off some pot shots against the party and make some very critical points. And Pence. I think she won that debate. I think she did a uh, great job for the uh, Democratic Party. I am not a Democrat, but I'm rooting for anybody who goes against Trump. And so I'm a Democrat for the year. And um, I like what she did. I liked the way she stood her ground. I like the fact she remained ladylike. I also like the fact that she had some bite with her, JB. 
Yeah, she definitely has some bite. Um, she stood up. She stood up to the moderator, and she stood up to uh, to the vice president. And she also did it in a way that was jive lady like honestly yeah. she wasn't she you know she went like nigga shut the fuck up <laughs> and she would say okay nigga you going to keep talking guess what's going to happen i'm going to keep talking nigga. Nigga. <laughs> and, yeah, shout and out that was her. the exact right way to do that yeah, you know what i'm saying no shout out to the moderator i mean i saw effort but i didn't it wasn't enough we got to stop letting these republicans say whatever the fuck they want for as long as the fuck they want and just go oh madam madam sir vice president sir president I need these moderators to be to a little rude. I, I'm going to need motherfucking uh, DMX to be a moderator. Arr, 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 shut up. Fuck up, bitch. Uh. I, need, I need something like that. I, I need somebody that's going to be a moderator that's going to get motherfuckers to be quiet. I need niggas. We might need to get Chief Ubaku Ibaku to, to host these moderations. <laughs> I'm tired of Trump and Pence just thinking they can say whatever the fuck they want, JB. I'm tired of it. Yeah, and they be and they be talking a whole lot of bullshit. A whole lot. Right, of, that right. nigga, that nigga Mike Pence was talking so much bullshit <laughs> that a fucking fly landed on his head. Nigga, in the nigga. middle, in the middle of the debate. Like, a fly? Ain't nobody gonna tell him it's a fly on his head. <laughs> what the hell? We watching this shit like this. That's a that's a motherfucking fly. <laughs> and I said, that, that's how you know he full of shit because the flies landed Nigga. on his ass. <laughs> Nigga. The Washington Post says Pence bulldoze, especially on the coronavirus. Harris spotlighted Democrats' health care strategy. Read our debate takeaways. So right away, that we, we see that the Washington Post is already like, Pence got shut down. And, I, you know, Mike Pence, I, I understand. Yeah, you've never argued with a black woman before. Right. <laughs> right. It, yep. it, 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 we make it look easy. Yeah. It, it, yeah, ain't, it, easy, ain't, it ain't that easy. It ain't part. easy, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> That's real as fuck. Fuck you mean? That's real as fuck. Arguing with a black woman ain't no motherfucking nigga, joke. Nigga. Oh man, um, she ripped him a new motherfucking new one. It was great to see. It is what the Democratic Party needed. Um, what the country needed, mm -hmm. so we can get forty five the fuck up out of there. No um, doubt. Do you think it, it held any weight for real? How, how do you feel about it? How do you think it it it, it uh, went across against the country? Well, and so, um, unfortunately, because the deck is so stacked against the American people right now, um, this was an important step in the right direction because mm -hmm. you got to understand what the Democratic Party is not just fighting for is, is a Democratic victory, a popular victory, a victory in the vote. They are fighting for an overwhelming victory that will supersede all of the electoral mechanisms that are in place to keep the Republican Absolutely. Party in, in power. So every motherfucking Democratic vote counts. And what I saw is I saw her swing motherfuckers who were in the middle a little bit more to the left tonight. And that was her job tonight, me. And I was a W. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I will what the fuck story of the week. Donald Trump, you know, get, take himself out of the hospital. You think you're Tupac. I'm going to check out the hospital early and then go back to the, nah, nigga, you're not Pac, nigga. Donald Trump, you'll never be Pac, nigga. You <laughs> fuck about you checking yourself out the hospital early. You ain't Pac. But 
this bitch ass nigga um, take the cell out of the hospital. So we just gotta wait and see, nigga. We not on your time. You you a bitch ass nigga for trying to use the election as a way to justify or condemn us getting another stimulus package. The fucking economy is in shambles. Niggas is broke. Niggas is losing their job. Two hundred and ten thousand Americans have died, and people are starting their own businesses like New Fashion Statement or Pod Name Kickback Merchandise, which you can pick up at New Fashion Statements dot my shopify.com or you can go to our patreon at patreon.com slash upon name kickback or you can send us money at hashtag upon name kickback on cash app now people have had to do this because the economy is so fucked up and you mean to tell me you're not going to make another decision on any money to send out until you win which means if you win you bitch ass nigga and let's be clear so you're going to withhold stimulus money. Now, you're going to cut everybody a check when you get out of the hospital immediately because that's the easy part. But actually signing real, real change, like a true stimulus package into law, that's a little difficult. Um, you and, cut people a check? Yeah, he, he signed. So, so he... Um, the real stimulus package, the the big one, that it that he signed like a small like little side deal, and it's basically like a twelve hundred dollar check or some shit that goes out um, before he gets out of the White House. But the big legislation that they're trying to change sure. is what he's holding on. That's what the article said. I'll read it again. Cause, Cause he said he's not signing anything until he, until he wins. Trump reverses course on coronavirus relief talks. Dangles new or oh, dangles new Trump wants on a similar check. President Trump urges Congress to use to approve piecemeal coronavirus measure. He was signed, including a new virus one on similar checks for Americans. That turn came just after I was after you, but is that that's after? To my understanding, that is still after the election. But go but scroll up. If I scroll up, no, 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 no down thing. Uh, I am probably send a standalone bill. I, you're thumbing away. Um, if I am sent a standalone bill for stimulus checks, they will, yeah, if I am sent this, they'll go out immediately. Okay. But nobody's sending that. So basically, no money until he gets reelected. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, glad you cleared that up for me. I yeah. misunderstood that. I misunderstood that. Um, Basically, it, if y'all do what the fuck I tell you right now, I'll send one. If not, I ain't sending shit till I get reelected. And they're not doing what he wants them to do, and they're not going to. So basically, what he said was, no money until I get reelected. Yeah, I mean, he, he's he's a bully who takes his ball and goes home. Um, I was actually- He ain't a bully, you a bitch. N niggas who did their ball and go home wasn't bullies. That was bitch-ass niggas. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah. I can't disagree. I can't yeah. disagree. I, I, I respect the bully, you know, I respect the bully more if he stands it against somebody who stands it against him. If he's like, I'm the bully and nigga fight him and he beat their ass, I'm like, oh yeah, you are the bully. But if you're just a bully because everybody else scared of you, then you're not really a, you know, you're not a, a bully get his hands dirty to me. And Trump ain't getting his hands dirty. You know what I'm saying? A bully had to whoop like 10 niggas asses to make the neighborhood scared of him. But then, then there's some little niggas that never be nobody ass, but they just whatever. I don't respect that. Whose ass did you beat? Oh, that's what I want to know. Trump ain't beat nobody ass. He ain't a bully. Well, I'm. I mean, I think that I think that is where your definition of what a lot of people believe a bully to be is a little different because, in most people's eyes, a bully actually is kind of a bitch ass nigga because what you're actually talking about isn't really considered a bully it's an alpha because uh no nah, uh, like, nah, well, this might be a cultural thing which i don't i don't know but like a bully was a nigga who beat everybody ass this this new thing where like the person just 
talks bad about you or nothing to you crying they're bullying you that's just new millennials faggot shit well, well that, excuse me not faggot shit i won't use that word no that's no, that no. punk shit no no no, 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 no. Okay. a bully is somebody who beat somebody who beat everybody ass in the neighborhood well no. that's a bully well, this new shit where you don't beat nobody ass that's just like people that, that's the white people go oh he well me he said i couldn't have water it allow me to, to allow me that's to sucker. allow me to number one agree with you bullies beat a lot of ass me growing up i was a nigga who they always tried to bully I was always the nigga who they tried that shit with. And bullies they tried didn't. everybody. I've well, been bullied, but I fought. The difference was how, if you fought back or not. Like yes. bullies try everybody because if, if you in a classroom with a bunch of sixth graders, you in a classroom with twenty sixth graders, and nine of them are scared of you, you, you might bully those nine, but eventually you can be like, why he ain't scared? Let me go get him. And then, you know, then there's, uh, you know, then things happen at that point. But um, bullies actually bullied people and beat them up and, and did physical things. This new millennial bullying is like they said something evil to me on the Internet. Well, and so uh, and so um, I guess the I think what we're seeing is, you know, we're seeing we're seeing. Donald Trump, who is a bully, and he then and what and this isn't this isn't a world where they're they're putting hands on each other, but what he does is he bullies people he he makes them do what they want by holding power over them and indicating consequences if they don't comply. That is literally what a bully is until you stand up to him. And guess what has happened to every motherfucking bully I stood up to? They all backed the fuck off. If they were real niggas and they had something that they want to deal with, with with me, then it wouldn't be no backing off. Like, you tried to come at me, I fucked you up, and now you leave me the fuck alone. And everybody, I tell you to leave the fuck alone. That makes you a bitch to me. Because if you were really about running the neighborhood, you would be about running me too. And you can. And that makes you a motherfucking bitch. A motherfucking bully. Because alphas rule everybody. Bullies only rule the people that they can. And that's what makes Donald Trump a bitch. I'm with that. I'm in, I'm in total support of that. Because I've been, you know, the, the pretense of bullied, and then when it came to time to throw hands, I was like, oh, I'm not bullied anymore. <laughs> I was actually scared. <laughs> then I punched this nigga in his fucking face and realized, like, why? What am I tripping for? And I've been bullied. I mean, I, think, I don't think you can get out of childhood without being bullied. Absolutely not. But Absolutely I, you know, but I, I, I guess the blessing is you get out of it having stood up to your bully, and then it, it gives you a sense of fearlessness going forward. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, you know, we all can go through these moments, and my expectation is that the Democratic Party will continue to go through these moments because they have to, because that's what the fuck this is. Um, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Um, that's what the fuck this is in this legislation that Donald Trump is trying to tighten the reins on. Um, but are we surprised, New? I mean, he shut down the fucking government when Congress wouldn't give him a wall. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, yeah, at like, the end of the day, fuck Donald Trump. Thank he you. got the best treatment, so it seems he's doing well. But fuck that nigga. I wouldn't cry if he died. And tell him I said it. Karis, one got a song where he say, um, every president we ever had lied, you know? I'm kind of glad Nixon died. Oh, yeah. And how I feel about it is every president we ever had lied, you know? I'd be glad if Trump died. Oh, yeah. That's my remix. The views of No Breaks New do not reflect the views of a partner in Kickback or J.B. Frank or the kickbackers across the globe that made us number 95. That's how the fuck I feel, though. You hear me? And I ain't scared because you can't fire me because I don't work for nobody. <laughs> yes, yeah. this is baby. Shout out to the insurance industry. But moving forward, um, our Don't Be Dumb Award. Um, white supremacists, JB. 
Let me let me pull this shit up. Yeah, this is um, this is this is a crazy one. So we all know Trump's, you know, he, he wouldn't acknowledge the Proud Boys or he told stand by and stand back and stand by. I want you guys to hear this shit. The assertment follows widespread outrage that President Donald Trump has not done enough to condemn white supremacists. Uh, white supremacists remain the most persistent and lethal threat in the homeland. The, the Department of Homeland Security concluded when its inaugural threat assessment released Tuesday, following widespread concern that President Donald Trump didn't do enough to condemn such groups at a uh, at a debate last week. We know that white supremacists are the biggest threat in the country because white supremacists have been the biggest threat on the planet over the last four or five hundred years. Am I, am, I, am I right? Am I lying? Yeah, am I, I mean, what's going on? That's pretty much that's pretty much what the hell it is. Y'all have and, have it all over the planet, fucking savages. Well, and so where the rubber meets the road here is you've got a president who is directly mobilizing these groups. And um, those of you who were not paying attention to the debate probably didn't hear um, the vice president double down on that this evening because what he specifically mm -hmm. said was that um, he wanted he wanted Americans to be proud and he wanted Americans to stay safe and yeah. he said that he was confident that the American people would assure a victory in the White House. Now, sorry for being a nitpicker for words, but he didn't say during the election. He said, he said in the White House. So that to me, I I heard a little dog whistle there. I heard Yeah, he he been dog whistling for the last couple of weeks. I heard I basically I heard, okay, you know, my people, one way or another, we need to stay here. That's what I heard. Um, and so that bothers me. What also bothers me is hearing the litany of generals that um, Kamala mentioned, but they were all retired. I was like, we we need some <laughs> we need some niggas mm -hmm. who ain't re who actually got control of troops who endorse you. Yeah, <laughs> like stop playing. Um, that was one of those chilling moments for me, New. Yeah, man, and um, I don't want to spend too much time on that, but I I definitely feel you, JB. It was like a um uh, a weird space to be in, and um, and that's where we've been over the last four yeah. years. Yeah, but a, a bright spot is when I, you know, when we educate ourselves and move above our circumstances. Absolutely, and we've been doing that as black people in this country for centuries. But one of the latest to do it is Walker Flocker. Yes. Walker um, received his honorary doctorate degree in philanthropy and humanitarianism, humanitarianism excuse me, uh, the start to the Instagram to share the prestigious news, smiling in doctoral cap and gown. I got honorary doctorate in philanthropy and humanitarianism. Um, it, 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 it's just dope, man. Walker's been on, he's been a vegan. He has changed his life around. He's, he was a nigga that said, when they said, how do you feel about, uh, who's voting against Obama the first time? Uh, uh, McCain, maybe? How do you feel about McCain? I don't, I don't do politics and shit. Like, nigga, you got a, millions of fans. That's the most intelligent thing you could say? And ever since then, he's felt called out? And he's educated himself. And answered. And it's like... I don't give a fuck where you start. It's about where you finish. Mm -hmm. Okay, he didn't know. He didn't give a fuck. He was high, whatever. Look what he's doing now. Right. It's like, bro, like, like, applaud you. Nipsey Hussle awards you. Mm -hmm. Because I know you ain't give a fuck about this shit and you weren't thinking about it. But now you are. And you're making other people think about it. Like, man, God, shout out to you, Walker. Like you awesome. did the work, nigga. When awesome. you do the work, JB, come on, man. Yeah, when I mean, you do the work. Let's break it down. He got an honorary doctorate in um, philanthropy and humanitarianism, which means that not only did he educate himself in those vastly important and 
and benevolent fields. Um, he educated and influenced culture to the point where an honorary doctorate was deemed necessary. I mean, that's an incredible achievement. Like, you know, I've been around people who get like honorary doctorates and shit. It's like motherfuckers like Cornell West and yeah. Quincy Jones and yeah. them type of like, those are the honorary doctorate ceremonies yeah. that I saw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. this is Waka, you know? Right. Right. So that shit is like- It's a little <laughs> different. Yeah, yeah, that's that's amazing, uh, absolutely amazing, an incredible achievement. Shout out to you, Waka Flocka ATL Zone. Um, for Netflix and chill, really quick, I'm gonna tell y'all. Um, we watched the debate. I'm watching um, uh, Lovecraft Country. Oh, so you you did pick it up then? Uh, yeah, so I picked up the last episode. I saw was. When she was trapped in a woman's body. I went back mm -hmm. and watched that full episode. Hey, okay. But not trapped, but when she was, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'm there. I want to finish it out. I know a lot of y'all are hitting me, but we don't want to go too far ahead until I catch up. Next week, I'll be fully caught up because I got the HBO Max app because I got tired of waiting and Fire Stick wasn't working the right way. And I right, 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 right. Uh, we got that. Um, I need to watch uh, Power. I'm going to catch them on Power this week. They're on winter break. So since it's on, we don't want to break for a week. We can get all of the spoilers next week on Power. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would have watched that. And um, I, I'm mainly just into sports. We'll get into that later. Mm -hmm. But that's mainly when I'm watching. Because right. of it's the fucking NFL, Major League Baseball, and uh, NBA Finals. All at the same time. That's taking up most of my TV. But as we'll get into later, the NBA Finals might be going away soon. But uh, what, what you watching, JB? Um, I actually caught, well, uh, obviously Lovecraft Country and then The Boys. Um, both of those are in episode seven of their seasons. I'm on episode like four of The Boys. Mm -hmm. I went mm -hmm. back to it. Yeah. And, um, and so um, in between all of that space, you know, that drive time, that at work bullshitting time just listening to shit time i've been binge watching a lot of these shows from like the late 90s into the early 2000s but they're like sci-fi shows so i told y'all about the outer limits before and these have been popping up in my in my uh in my rabbit hole on prime okay, right okay okay uh -huh. so um uh the um outer limits that was a great show i watched i binged like all six seasons of that shit jesus yeah yeah hour long hour long episodes 22 episodes a season i just it, damn but i mean i i probably don't remember most i like when i binge them like i don't watch closely every goddamn episode i'm doing other shit while it's on okay, okay. <laughs> um so now i'm doing that with a show called uh eureka and i heard of that yeah, it's on because I told you about it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the joke with Sally Richardson. Yeah, in it. yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and I thought Sally Fields, but now I know you mean Sally Richardson. Sally Richardson, you know, Ashanti might be watching. I'm, I'm gonna stop. Wait, JB. Wait. I don't is want she to bad as shit? Yeah, yeah. She, it's Lord. Ooh, yeah. It's Lord. Yeah. So she stars in this show, and what do you know? They have five fucking seasons. So I'm in. I think I. I just started season four. Okay. So, but again, binge watching, it's a lot of fun though. Cause it's a it's a town that's basically like it's like a city, but it's like a Manhattan project city. So it's all like world leading scientists and inventors and engineers and shit. And so the story is about a sheriff and uh Sally Richardson, the director of the big lab in the town. And they're running the town, basically. She get naked at all? There is lingerie. All right, I'm so. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was fun. What else is I did? I, I got to finish the Karate Kid season two. Not the Karate Kid. Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. I, I, yeah. still, I stopped on that. I stopped on the show because I, I got podcasts I listen to. I got music I listen to. I got TV shows and sports. It'd be. 
nigga. It's a lot. It just be a lot to try to it's consume. A lot. Yeah. And when yeah. NBA and the NFL came back, everything else shut down. Like, everything was like, hey, fuck all y'all. I'm watching sports. But mm-hmm. I'm going to try to get back into into some of that shit. Um, uh, musically, uh, right now, I'm the, the thing I listen to the most is 21 Savage. Him and Metro Boom put out an album. We told you Morgan Freeman was actually narrating it. Shit, this fire, man. It's just fire. Like, I can give y'all some more music because we do our podcast, our music playlist every week. So I had some more Jazzy, female single rapper, put out her EP, Soul Therapy. Um, Alex Asley, young lady, put out a song called Good and Plenty, which is really good. West Side Gun put out Who Made the Sunshine. That's his first major label debut from Griselda. Fire. Got Slick Rick on two songs. Slick Rick. Slick Rick like 79. But he got Slick Rick on two songs. <laughs> That's what's up. It, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, YG, My Life 400. I haven't gotten into that yet, but I'm not going to shit on it. I ain't got into it yet. I told y'all 21 Savage killing it. Bryson Tiller album anniversary killing it. Um, And nephew Sean Cromartie. New project out of the D.C. DMV hey. Uptown. Kennedy Street. Had enough. Sean Cromartie. Had enough. Is out now. Get that one first. Mm-hmm. That's family. You yeah. hear me? No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. And he's got some really nice tracks on that yeah. show. That got a smooth little R.B. thing going. Yeah. Yeah. I see young man. Should have had me do a background. Had or oh, never mind. But, um, don't do that. Yeah, don't, our book don't. club, we're not going to get into tonight. It was mm-hmm. a short week. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? We give you guys a chance to get the book. Right. You, you, right. you would hear this when you should have had time, but we don't believe you. So next episode, the first three chapters of The Slight Edge Absolutely. by Jeff Olson. Absolutely. I'm going to say it two more times so they can get it. Yeah. The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. Mm-hmm. The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. Yes. It's a motivational book. It's a get you in the mind frame of success book. It's a how do I beat 2020 book. I'm not bigging them up for the fuck of it. It's a good book. I don't know that nigga. I just want to make sure you have the tools to do what you need to do. So we want to talk about that. Um, and as always, thank you for your support. People have been buying our merch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, we mm-hmm. have new merch coming. Uh, we thank you for that. We thank you for being Patreons. Whether mm-hmm. you're the $2 tier, the $4 tier, or the $7 tier. $2 tier means you support. $4 Kickers. tier means you support and get extra episodes. Backers. $7 tier means you get merchandise. Free Kick merchandise. <laughs> I had to try. That nigga coughing and shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, yeah, I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> uh, so that's what we're doing. Um, anything else, Jimmy? Nah, man. Good night. God bless. Thank you for joining us. You will catch this on Monday as you always do. So we love you, man. Uh, uno, we out. <laughs> <laughs> Boom.